Good morning, everybody from Australia. This is still only 35 cents, and this is the Merry Monday Mail Call Show. Welcome. I see we have one person viewing already, which is great. Nice to see you. Welcome. Um, thought I'd mix it up a little bit today in terms of the show. We're going to have some commentary in terms of some of the issues. Not too much in terms of mail call for this week. Um, so I wanted to talk about the last Ronan news and also the UK price variant heritage sales that happened recently. Um, so we'll be talking through that. Um, there's also a few other little things that I wanted to share with you all. Um, Dino, hello. Let me bring this up. There you go. Dino's in the chat. Great to see you. Um, Long-term viewer, which is good. Always leaving very insightful and fun comments. So plenty more where those can come um so yes so today as i say there's a few things i wanted to cover off first one i've got merch finally so this is a tester at the moment but look, we're going to be doing these alongside stickers etc but yeah we've got still only 35 cents merch coming soon folks so stay in tune for that one i'm very happy with the quality of these actually turned out really well um, so yeah, if you see me around at the cons, um, you'll be seeing me in my still only 35 cent get up now. Um, who else we got on the show? What's on the comic rack? Mr. Aitken, really good to see you. How are you? I'm very well. Thank you. Very well indeed. Um, yes, it's been a busy couple of weeks. Uh, got married a week, but last, and then, uh, post that we had a party on Saturday night. And then we'll be off jetting for honeymoon next week. So there won't be a show next week, unfortunately. Uh, I will flag that straight away. However, um, I will be on a I will be on Only Slabs, Rob's Fat Stacks of Comics Only Slabs show on April 27th uh, at 11:30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time and 2:30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Not sure. I think that's 4.30 in the morning here in Melbourne. So it'll be a bit of an early start for me. Um, but I will be presenting a whole bunch of slabs. I've got a bit of a theme. I won't reveal it until the show. But uh, if you get a chance, um, stick that one in your diary. Um, head over to Rob's channel. I'll leave a link and post the live stream so that you can get a look at Rob's channel and some of the previous episodes. I'm sure most of you have already seen them. But yeah, it'll be my chance to show some of the books that I've got um, uh, in pristine slabs. Um, so, yeah, looking forward to that. Um, interestingly as well, I just posted a, a video on WonderCon, and I did have a giveaway for this book in there for someone who could spot Rob Liefeld. Now, a bit of background on this whole Rob Liefeld giveaway. He is in this video. He is in that video. And, I'll, again, I'll leave a... I'll leave a link in the description. So go in there and scour that video for what is an, a little brief appearance of Rob, but but he's certainly there, and it isn't Deadpool. So uh, there's been a couple of guesses so far. Um, Deadpool is not Rob Liefeld in disguise. Um, there is Rob Liefeld somewhere in that video, and whoever finds him and puts a timestamp in the comment um, they'll get this book. I'll ship it anywhere in the world. Um, this is Captain Britain Volume 1. Uh, it covers the uh, Volume 2 issues from Captain Britain that were released in the UK and some early ones. It's no Alan Moore run in here, but it is a great story and a great lead up into the Excalibur storyline. So wanted to share that with you. If you, can, if you do find Rob, leave a timestamp in one of the comments on the WonderCon video. Um, but as I say, no one has found him as yet. Uh, and to be perfectly honest, when I was filming, I didn't even know he was there. It was only after in editing that I caught glimpse of Rob and went, how did I miss this? Like, why didn't I just reach out and say, I, I just didn't even see him. So that should give you a sense of, of where he may or may not be. Um, but yeah, the vid last video was really good. We are past 400 subscribers now. Uh, which blows me away. Um, so we're on the path to 500. So I've got to think about um, what I'm going to do for him from a giveaway standpoint for 500, because that is a big milestone. 
Um, yeah, so I'm super happy with how things are going. Um, all your help and support has been much appreciated. To everyone that's subscribed, to everyone who's left a comment, to everyone who's, who's, who's hit that like button, which if you haven't already, please go and do that. And please subscribe and please ring the notification bell. I get bored of saying that every week. It's like, surely these, I shouldn't be, I shouldn't have to keep nagging, but I'm not nagging. It's the best thing ever. You guys are great. The community is fantastic uh, and loving every minute of it. So yeah, as of right now, I'm looking at my YouTube studio, 407 subscribers. So yeah, super happy. And that video is up to 1,200. 1, so seems that my WonderCon or oh, any of my con videos seem to do quite well. So I've been doing a few more of those. Heroes Con is next. So if you're going to Heroes Con, please, please reach out. Um, love to catch up with whoever's there. Um, I know a lot of comic YouTubers are we're already talking about it in terms of just catching up and um, haven't planned any live streams yet, any ideas of what how what coverage I'm going to do. But I'm there for the whole weekend um, and would love to catch up with all of you there if you are going. And then the other one is like, what are the cons later this year? So I'm toying with New York Comic Con, toying with Terrific Con. Uh, again, that's another one where a lot of uh, a lot of my comic book YouTuber friends are going. So it's you know I should really try and attend that. Let's see what you said, Mister Aitken says. Still only thirty. Yes, the con tour it continues. It oh, I have to keep going. Um, it's it's great content. It's great meeting people and. The last two cons, I haven't really had a chance to buy books. So really looking forward to Heroes Con for that because I can buy some books rather than just go to my storage locker and pick up the books that I've been buying from claim sales, et cetera. So um, only had two pickups from, from WonderCon. They were great pickups nonetheless, but I want to get back into dollar bin diving, getting into the sort of the hidden books that are in those uh, short boxes and long boxes. Um, but yes, if you're out there, we'd love to see you. Um, what else is on my list that I needed to tell you? Nothing else there. As I say, we've covered the giveaway. We've covered um, my appearance on Only Slabs, which is upcoming on 27th. We've covered the fact there'll be no mail call show next week. I'm, I apologize in advance. However, I will be trying to put a couple of videos in its place. I've got a, re a couple of really good unboxing videos um coming out soon with some really big keys um a couple of huge silver age books um that i did a little experiment with um in a cgc submission so that'll be coming out soon then i've got a big really big silver age key reveal um that'll be coming out as well as a modern submission which was a really interesting one um that uh came back I, I i must have got the loose grader this time um because they all came back at very high sort of grades so really happy with that submission um so i'll be sharing those uh in absence of the mail call show so keep to keep your eyes peeled for these so what i wanted to touch on first uh, i tried to do this last week in the show but unfortunately i wasn't able to because i couldn't work the internet which is unusual for someone who works in tech. So um, I managed to fix it this time around. So I wanted to share with you, um, I was monitoring the heritage auctions recently and a certain book came up for, now I wonder if you can see this. Let's see if you can see this. So this book came up for auction um amazing spider-man i've got the wrong book there let me change the tab share this tab instead here we go let's share this tab instead so so this amazing fantasy 15 came up for sale um in their latest auction um and you can see here it did go for a pretty penny. So it sold for $84,000, including buyer's premium. Now, what's interesting about this and why I was interested in, so I did bid on this. I was out very, very early, um, putting a cheeky, cheeky low, low for low, low for this book. But I've been looking for this for a long time. And the reason why I'm looking for this is because it's a Pence edition, UK Pence edition. And it's a very nice presenting 65 
So it's sold for 84,000. I think it's 72 without the buyer's premium. Um, but what struck me about this, and there was another sale too, which similarly I'll share with you here, is they also had uh, a amazing Spider-Man number one, 8.5 that sold for 84,000 as well. And again, this is a UK price variant. Now, I was intrigued by this because, again, I was hoping, uh, you know, the, the usual subtext with UK price variants is that they go for a lot lower, 10 to 20% lower than their US cent counterparts. But in this instance, looking at um, the, let me just bring this up, looking at Go Collect, the FMV on the Amazing Fantasy 6.5 is 70,000. So we've got books now, the UK price variance. This is the thing that I was looking at this and going, finally, it seems that we've got parity of sorts, which has been a long time coming in terms of the UK price variance. So is this a sign of recognition of the fact that those UK price variants are exceptionally rare, exceptionally thin on the ground in comparison to the US counterparts, and as we all know, essentially the same book? So it's an interesting one. Is this the start of the climb for UK price variants? And if you go to the Amazing Spider-Man number one, you find the same thing. Um, the FMV is sitting at around 66,000. Let me just share this as well. So the FMV on the ASM one is sitting at $66,000 here. This is for that similar rate five. Interestingly, the heritage auctions don't seem to have appeared yet in the Go Collect sales. So I'll wait for that. They have appeared on GPA analysis, which is another price um, monitoring site. But it is fascinating to see that this is now, it feels like this is starting to trickle through. Let's just see what Dino just says here. Dumb question. Is there any physical difference between the Pence variants besides the cover price in Disha or other? So, yes, there is a couple of little changes. So the first one is on early Silver Age um, books. Uh, essentially what ends up happening, let me just stop sharing this. Um, essentially what you find, and maybe I'll bring an image up, Dino, to show you. Um, let me bring up. Yeah, this is a good example for you here. Um, let me share this tab. So this is the one. Okay. Okay. So the main difference you'll find is the 9D. So essentially that's replaced. Uh, still the same printing plate. It's just overlaid. And then they blanked out the date on some of the earlier um, UK price variants. So you don't get the date because obviously they were shipping them across the ocean. Um, they didn't know what time, they were, when they would land. But to all intents and purposes, that's exactly the same. Now, the only other difference is that there is an indicia on the inside cover uh, on the advertisement page on the uh, as, you, as you open up to the splash. And it's got, I think it's Thorpe and Sons. Um, I'd have to go back through a previous um, video to, the, to give you a sense of that. I don't have a book in front of me right now to sort of read through, but it's, it's, it's a tiny sort of one-liner that's printed over the, on top, um, sits underneath the ad itself, that's the only difference. Other than that, everything else is exactly the same. Now, there's the usual debate and which ones were printed first. And there's arguments that they sort of flip-flopped. But general consensus is that they were printed first because then you'd get, they had a much richer color strike. Um, and essentially what they could do is they could then at least, you know, if there were any issues with the book, they could, they, when they went around to printing the US copies, it would be a better. But, but again, there's no definitive answer on that. Um, but to all intents and purposes, well, not to all intents and purposes, they are the same book. Like literally, they're off the same print run, the same press, run at the same time. Um, and that's why I think that they're, they're finally getting the recognition that they deserve. I mean, you look at Canadian price variants, you look at the normal price variants in terms of the 30 cents, the 35 cents. Um, and the fact that they see uh, they see a increase or a premium compared to the usual um, copies. 
I think at some point there, there will be mainstream recognition. It's still very, very niche at the moment. But again, when you're talking about big Silver Age keys like this, um, I think it's starting to trickle through because, you know, traditionally they would have been 20% lower and now they're at parity, if not more. Um, so it was great to see that do a little bit of analysis. Um, so yeah, um, always, always interested to see what's happening with UK price variance. Um, and it's a big focus for me and you'll see some more coming through in the videos in the next week or so. As I say, I've got a couple of unboxings from that. The other piece that I wanted to talk to everybody about, uh, was the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, um, news that we've had this week which is that they're going to be making a Last Ronin live-action movie, R-rated. Um, let me bring this up. So this was in, I'm, I'm a big fan of The Verge. Um, yeah, so they're making a live-action movie, Paramount reportedly developing an R-rated cinematic adaption of IDW's The Last Ronin TMNT comic, produced by Walter Hamada and penned by Boys Kills World co-writer Taylor Burton-Smith. So... That's great news. Now, in honor of that, I thought I'd share with you um, a few things that I've got. I, I, I got into Last Ronin, um, and it's sort of sparked my you know, te Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles collection a little bit. I haven't got much to show, but I thought given the, celebrate, given the news, um, I thought I'd give you, um, give you a glimpse of what I've got from a Last Ronin standpoint specifically. And... Uh, so first of all, this is the last Ronin. Let me try and get it in the light better for you all. This is the last Ronin. Uh, let's see. That's not great. Let, let's try that. This is last Ronin, um, but this is the Ashcan edition. So a little bit of background with this book. Um, when it first, the light is terrible. There you go. Um, when this book first came out, they sent a preview Ashcan to uh, retailers. And it was well received in terms of the idea, but they felt the art was pretty bad. So this is a great reason why you do an ash can, right? To try and tease it out. Um, and basically they produced this sort of, I think it was eight pages in total. And this came out in June of 2020. So it was the start of the, of the whole um, pandemic. And I managed to pick up one of these ash cans uh, and submitted it to CGC, got a 9-8, and also got it signed by Kevin Eastman during, he did a signing at CGC during that period as well. Uh, yeah, that glare is killing me. Um, you, let me just bring this up from that, Don. You might take down my question. You might take down my question for more detail in the run. Yes, will do. There you go. And then that darn glare, yes, it is it is killing me. I don't know why today of all days is particularly bad. Uh, let me do, is that down there? Yep, there you go. So you can see that a little bit clearer. So this is the ash can. As I say, retailers didn't like the art, so they went back and redid the art. Now, um, so this is my ash can. Um, again, super happy to have managed to get this in a 9.8 and signed by Kevin Eastman and the lovely, it is actually a really good, signature in red sort of fits in beautifully with the the cover and the colors so i'm super happy with that i didn't get a sketch i didn't want one at the time and then this is my actual last ronin number one again nine eight signed by uh, kevin eastman again red uh red uh, texture i think or paint pen um, so super happy with that. But what's interesting is that you look at the two and there is a variation in the art. So they went back following the feedback from the retailers and changed the art in the book. Um, so you'll notice there's two different creative teams in terms of the, the artwork. Um, but yeah, that, that, that's a great example of when an Ashcan works and they change the artwork, change the book to support that. The other thing that's good on the back of the ash can, it's essentially two covers. You get the same cover back to back. Um, such a great, you know, I was super happy to get this. And I love the concept of this, uh, which got me back into my collecting on in terms of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Um, and then the other piece I wanted to show you, another last 
Ronin number one. This is the third printing. Now, this is, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you a 9.9, 9.9. This is one of the, I think I've only got two 9.9s in my collection. This is the, this is the, so this I got from CGC uh, when I won the registry set for my Captain Britain set. So I won an award for that set, uh, I think a couple of years back now. And this was one of the prizes that they sent out. So signed by all the creators on this book. So Ben Bishop, Luis Antonio Galgado, Kevin Eastman, uh, Isar Scorza, Isaac Scorza, and Tom Walt. So it's got a huge amount of signatures on it um, and 9.9 .9 grade. Third printing. Um, so I'll probably pick up the second printing just to complete the collection now. But, um, yeah, super happy to have that 9.9. .9 in the PC, and especially our Teenage Mutant Turtles, last Ronin book. I also had to get all of the series, so I um, haven't had these graded, but basically everything up from issue one through five, and then second, I got a variant, oh, variant cover of issue five as well. So, yeah, that kicked me off in terms of my... Um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles uh, collection. So I also wanted to share with you this, which I picked up um, a few months back. I think I picked this up at either Baltimore or Heroes Con. I suspect it was Baltimore. Um, but I've been after this for a while. So again, another key within the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles storyline. This is where the first issue where Jenica becomes a Ninja Turtle. Um, so this is the first like, new turtle to be introduced, um, Jenica. Um, this is the uh, San Diego Comic-Con edition. So it's this great, um, one of the splash panels in the book on the front cover with the turtles in black and white and Jenica in the full color. Uh, and again, this is signed by signed and sketched by Kevin Eastman, um, Bobby Cornell and Tom Waltz. So, yeah, super happy to have picked that up as well. As I say, I'm trying to get my... Um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles keys right now, and this was one that I was was on my list. This particular variant um, because of this great cover. I do have the first appearance of Jenica before she becomes Turtle uh, somewhere. I haven't. I need to press it and send it to CGC. Um, but yeah, that that's one on the list. Um, you would have seen a previous video where I've got my uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles third print signed by Kevin Eastman with a sketch. Uh, that's currently sitting in CBCS at the moment. Interesting on that one, obviously submitted to CBCS for authentication. And then two weeks later, CGC decided that they'd do the same thing in terms of their authentication services. So we'll waiting to see what CGC do with their authentication service uh, and how that's going to work. So may need to then, when that book comes in, is then resubmitted to CGC Um Unfortunately, as I say, I, I, I was a big supporter and, and really liked what CBCS were doing with the, their authentication services. Um, and it's logical that CGC would do it. It just feels, yeah, what is CBCS going to do now in absence of any differentiator? Um, they have a good product now. Their label's good. Um, it's just interesting, you know, how are they going to combat CGC's effective monopoly in terms of that. I mean, again, I'm I'm looking at you know books that I'm going to be getting back that have been authenticated by CBCS and going to get them done by CGC because I know that the value will be in those books as opposed to necessarily um, a CBCS slab. So it's a real shame. Um, and then to close off TM Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles today for this week, I wanted to share this. I've shown this on I think John and Richards. Bronze and Modern Gods stream when we were talking um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, but I uh, wanted to share this with you all. Um, this I bought this in absence of actually having a teen, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles one at the time. This is the first collected edition by Mirage Studios, which has this amazing wraparound cover of the Turtles, um, which I don't think has been published anywhere else. It just I think it was specifically for this. This collects issues one through 11, uh, as well as the, the one-shots. So you'll see here, it's a great book. 
Um, I picked this up from Facebook group here in Australia. Someone had it over here. Um, um, lucky enough to get it at a reasonably good price. Um, so, yeah, I will be enjoying this. This is a good sort of uh, collected edition of one of the first, I think it is the first print they did of this. Um, first collected edition. So, it doesn't have any intro information in terms of copyright, etc., which is very strange considering it's a hardback book. Um, so, yeah, uh, fascinating. Uh, if you can get one, grab one of these there was a hardcover version which i'm trying to find which kevin and peter loud both signed and it was numbered um i might try and dig that out and try and see if i can find one of those um but yes who do we have in the chat now the art chemist oh no there you go the oh that's i've just posted the wrong one there you go no i keep doing the wrong one there we go if anyone wants to pop on, by the way, uh, and have a chat, uh, I can put the link. I'll put the link in the description. Um, we've got probably, yeah, normally run these for about an hour. If you want to pop on and you've got any books you wanted to show, um, feel free to click on the link. I don't have too many more books to show today. As I say, I wanted to go through the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles piece. Um, I've got a couple of little Marvel UK books that I wanted to show you, which... Um, tickled my fancy um a little bit strange and you get a sense of how uk books are but if yeah if you're free and you want to join up jump on love for you guys to do so oh that's done it twice anyway so this is the first one that i wanted to show you now this is this is from 1996 this is marvel's action hour featuring iron man mr fantastic Invisible Girl, Human Torch, and The Thing. So basically a reprint of Fantastic Four and Iron Man. Um, it was in the 1996, so comics at that point where they're trying to just grab on. But you can see here, this is not your standard Marvel UK fair. Um, it's got a fabulous chew bar that wasn't is no longer available to it, but um, they were still doing the reprints at this late stage. Um, interesting choice of characters in 1996, given the popularity of X-Men, for instance. Um, but Marvel UK seemed to drop off a little bit of a cliff um, in the 90s as everyone reverted to the standard US comic books um, through comic books anyway, through comic book stores anyway, LCSs. Um, but yeah, I thought this was a nice little halfback. Uh, I think that is a, I think, yes, I think that is a, a, a piece of art that was commissioned in the UK specifically um so it looks like it's drawn in on it so i don't think that's necessarily um uh a piece that came from the us but again interesting for you to see that marvel was still marvel uk was still going in 1996 and trying its best to sort of put these books out there um but the one that i really wanted to show you which i really like now again this is a super high grade one this i I was digging through my boxes at the back of the UK and found this, and I didn't get to, I haven't got a chance to show anyone yet. Um, I think it might be a reprint of. I think it might be a reprint. Let's let's crack it open and have a look, shall we? Who knows? You never know. Um, let's see. I think it is. So the story continues on the interior. This is number one, a very strange way to, to start a book. So starting a book with the front page cover panel and then leading straight into the story. Um, but yes, um, Mr. Reagan, if you can tell me if that is FF202, it looks that way, um, given the fact. Uh, yes, it looks that way. This is the one with the building that flies off. Baxter building taking off. Um, full colour though, which is nice. And then I think you get uh, the spores issue. So uh, another Bronze Age Iron Man. So Iron Man, Fantastic Four. Um, interesting choice in terms of what books they decided to print in the 90s. But um, yes. And then the last one is Marvel Action. Uh, this is issue one. 
This is from 19, from memory, if memory serves me, let me just bring it up. Marvel Action, I think it was 1981, yes. So what's interesting about this book, let's take it out to show you, is not so much, you know, the reprints that are inside, which is standard Marvel UK fare. Uh, so black and white art. On newsprint paper, Doctor Strange is in there. What's so good about this is the amazing cover art by a very early Alan Davis. So let me see if I can zoom in. So there, there's your Alan Davis signature. And look at the realisation of those characters at that point. So this is very early, 1981. Alan Davis was still um, quite early in his style so it's uh, probably you know he's still uh, i think he'd only been working on captain britain at this point um for a little while so he was still quite new to the comics medium but yeah lo lovely cover just to have that alan davis um artwork is pretty cool um so if you can find it hunt this one out because it's a nice book i'm hopefully gonna probably if i see alan davis again at a show i'll probably take this and get him to sign this one because i think this is a really nice piece of his work very early on um uh, and again it's it's always good his work is he's one of my favorite artists and he's also a very prolific writer which is the other thing that i love his run on excalibur when he took it over um he really loves those characters um, and he's not a bad writer at all. So I, I, I'm surprised that they haven't taken advantage of that. You've got, you know, someone who is such a good artist and then is also to, able to do great stories too. Um, yeah, they, they should really take advantage of that. I think, um, you know, his work is fantastic. So that's pretty much it for this show today as i say we've gone through everything there won't be a show next week unfortunately um but we will be back the following week so next week we'll miss um but we'll be back the following week but if you can and you get a chance please join me on only slabs on april 27th as i say um really could do with the support um it'd be good to show off some of the books uh, a lot of you haven't seen I think we have to show 20 to 24 books. Uh, and as I mentioned, I do have a bit of a theme going on. And uh, probably some of you who are long-time viewers will, will know what that theme will probably be. Um, but, yeah, I'd love to ha have everyone join, um, give me the feedback on the books. Um, love to hear your feedback on the books today. If you want to leave any comments, please do so. As always, hit that like button. really helps us out. Uh, and if you haven't already, check out my WonderCon video and see if you can find rob because this alan davis book captain britain is still up for grabs no one's found rob yet so go to my wondercon video if you see rob put it a timestamp in the comments and hopefully or maybe you'll win this um so with that it's been great to have you all today thank you all for coming um those of you in the chat it's been great. I'm still getting to grips with all this tech. Um, live streams be damned, as they say. Um, but, yeah, it's been great seeing everybody. Uh, I hope you had a good video. Uh, leave a comment down below. And hopefully we'll see you soon. Take care.